Hello, and welcome to the Curator's Corner. I'm your host, Brian Anderson, Curator, Fireman's Hall Museum. Here at the Curator's Corner, we aim to bring you the history of firefighting in Philadelphia, as well as the history of the Philadelphia Fire Department and its volunteer partners. As this month reflects Black history, let's remember the African-American firefighters that sacrificed, persevered adversity, and laid the pathway for all to follow them. The paid Philadelphia Fire Department, known as the Bureau of Fire, was organized in 1871 with 22 engines and five truck companies, replacing the loose confederation of 92 volunteer companies. Philadelphia did not hire its first black firefighter until 1886, who was Isaac Jacobs. Jacobs was stationed at Engine 11, located at 1016 South Street. And although designated as a hoseman, he was relegated to caring for the company's horses and served until 1891. In 1905, Philadelphia hired its second African-American firefighter, Stephen E. Presco, who unlike Jacobs, Presco fought fire and died in the line of duty in 1907. Engine 11 became the firehouse where all African-American firefighters were stationed and often working under white supervisors in chief despite their treatments as second-class citizens and firefighters. The African-Americans of Engine 11 provided first-class service. These men risked their lives for citizens of all colors, despite their fellow white firefighters who would not work alongside them. The firefighters of Engine 11 forged the camaraderies and bonds shared by firefighters who risked their lives every day. Today, we will remember the three African-American firefighters that died 30 years ago from Engine 11 fighting the Meridian High Rise Fire. On February 23rd, 1991, at 20, 2700 hours, Box 495 was struck for an alarm at 14 South Penn Street, which is across the street from City Hall. This was the 38-story Meridian Bank building. Upon arrival of Battalion 5, Battalion Chief George Yeager noted heavy smoke coming from the 20th floor and struck the second alarm. The fire would eventually reach 12 alarms. At 15.0100 hours on February 24, some 17 and a half hours after the fire was declared under control by Commissioner Roger Olshafer. During the fire, Engine 11 was operating on the upper floors above the fire. They became disoriented in the maze of office cubicles and heavy smoke. Shortly before 2300 hours on the 23rd, Captain David Holcomb of Engine 11 reported that he and two firefighters were trapped on the 30th floor and running out of air. An extensive rescue effort began with a floor by floor search. The three members of Engine 11 were found on the 28th floor. They had been overcome by heat, by heavy toxic smoke. We're also extremely concerned now because we're seeing more signs of uh, serious uh, structural and, uh, damage into the interior of the building, much more on the 28th and 29th than we had below. So we have a team of engineers trying to give us an upgrade on that because we're concerned about uh, structural collapse. Mr. What could that mean? Could the building, is there a chance the building could collapse at this point? The last time we talked to the structural engineers, he thought there could be a pancaking down from probably the 28th to the 18th floor, but it would be in the interior of the building. The fire commissioner has set up a collapse zone with streets blocked off around one Meridian Plaza to ensure safety just in case the building does collapse. The fire hit on the 22nd floor and was already blazing when firefighters raced to the scene just before 8.30 last night. Three firefighters were killed trying to put out the flames. 52-year-old Captain David Holcomb, 42-year-old Phyllis McAllister, and 28-year-old James Chappelle. The 12-alarm out-of-control blaze has drawn hundreds of sightseers to the area. Betty Inman, who worked on the 22nd floor, says she's just glad the fire didn't hit during business hours when the building would have been filled with people. I wouldn't work in another building without them. Without sprinkler systems. If we were there, I would have never made it down 22 floors walking. Have you thought about that? Yes, I have. It's very scary. They were Captain David Holcomb, appointed January 9th, 1967, assigned to Engine 12 on March 6, 1967, transferred to Engine 41, January of 1972, 
and was promoted to lieutenant on April 21st, 1975, assigned to the Division I pool. He served as a, as a lieutenant at engine 16 in June of 1975, engine 69 in December of 77, and ladder 11 on November 15th of 1980. He also served in the fire marshal's office in June of 1983. Holcomb was promoted to captain on October 31st of 1988 to the division one pool and served as the station captain at engine 49 on May 22nd, 1990. And finally engine 11 on October 2nd, 1990. Firefighter Phyllis McAllister appointed August 3rd, 1981. Assigned engine 11 on October 12th of 1981. Firefighter James Chappelle appointed May 4th of 1987, assigned engine 11, June 29th, 1987. Uh, the last uh, position we had uh, from engine 11 uh, was on the 30th floor. They had broken a window to try to get some air and they were, they were trapped up there. We started the search on the 30th to the 38th, <laughs> primary and secondary. Uh, then we started down. They were not on the 30th. They had the wrong floor. They were on the 28th. Rescue teams coming down from the roof and up from the interior of the 38-story building could not reach their fallen comrades in time. Captain David Holcomb of South Philadelphia's Engine Company 11 and two of his men, 42-year-old Phil McAllister and 28-year-old James Chappelle, suffocated inside the dark, smoky building. Fire officials still aren't sure why they were up there. We're still doing some debriefing of uh, the sector commanders uh, to find out uh, who had that sector and what their mission was there. It could have been, they might have been given the mission to get to the roof uh, and open the roof scuttles, but that's just speculation at this point. We're trying to bear that out. What is clear, the commissioner says, is that those three men should not have died fighting a fire in an empty building. But the systems designed to save lives in an inferno like this one completely failed them. They lost electricity early on in the early stages of this fire. Then the backup system went out. Fire pumps built into the walls of the building were not working, and there were no sprinklers on the first through the 29th floors. The 30th floor was equipped with a sprinkler system, and it kicked in earlier today. Finally, that's where the fire stopped. If the building was fully sprinkled and it operated, we wouldn't have had to save the, the firefighters. We would have had a very small fire confined to a small part of the 22nd floor. As we close this episode of the Curator's Corner, let us not forget the African-American men and women who have accepted the challenge and stood on the shoulders of the black pioneers who laid the pathway before them. As they rise to the expectation and shatter all boundaries and barriers, as an example of this dedication and sacrifice, the Philadelphia Fire Department has had three African-American commissioners, Harold Harrison, Lloyd Ayers, and Derek Sawyer, with depth and diversity amongst its ranks. This would include the first ever African-American female deputy commissioner of EMS Crystal Yates and the EMS Health Safety Office Infectious Control Officer, Captain April Smallwood. In 1980, the Philadelphia Fire Department Assistant Chief's position was eliminated. Under Commissioner Teal in 2018, the position of assistant chief was reactivated to include the first African-American assistant chiefs, Rob Wilkins, Rick Davison, and Chuck Walker. Also the newly promoted first African-American fire battalion chief, Lisa Forrest and fire captain, Tara Mungin. The company I would like to recognize this month is Engine 11. I would like to thank all my fellow brothers and sisters of this great department. I would also like to thank everyone for tuning in and watching. And until next time, remember, fire is everyone's fight. And keep in contact with our social media and check out our Freedom From Fire, hosted by Lieutenant Lisa DeSamore. Thank you, and until next time.